But when it comes to brick and mortar, you're looking at, shoot, five years, 10 years, just depending, you know what I mean? With mine, I did five years um, a five-year agreement. And I, I went ahead and I took it to a lawyer, I took it to a professional to go over it and make sure the terms that we agreed upon was in there. And thank God I had a lawyer because after we did the negotiations, the lawyer skimmed through it again and was like, um, they didn't put this in there. They didn't put in that and that sort of thing. So, uh, cause a lot of times they just give you a general standard contract. And then, you know, when you get to negotiating, you know, add or take out some things. So you have to make sure that it's thoroughly scammed through and that what you agreed upon is in that contract. In my negotiation, I asked for three free months so I can be able to have time to make enough money to cover a lot of the costs. With the brick and mortar, the lease is longer. Um, the credit check is, is insane, which is why I said you gotta have good credit. It's more overhead. You got to pay for electrical water. I mean, uh, yeah, electricity, water. In a salon suite, let's say the plumbing goes wrong or, or you know, anything happen, electrical issue. The manager or the people that own it, they have to take care of the, you know, that. But when you're in a brick and mortar, you're responsible for the plumbing. You're responsible for any electri electrical issues. Like, you're basically responsible for more so that's why i say you have to put into account you want to make sure you have an emergency fund you know what i mean always set some money to the side just in case you know of course if you have a bigger space you have employees so you want to have a payroll or if you have people doing booth rent independent contractors um so it's way more responsibility you may need a receptionist depending but if you have a great online booking system or salon software that can literally be the receptionist for you and then what i also put into the uh leasing agreement for brick and mortar which was really important is a non-compete which means i didn't want any type of salon to be in that building you know what i mean i wanted to be the only salon uh in that building so that was a really good clause to have oh my god this man i'll tell you california something else with the driving um but like i said there's more fees cam fees um which i told you the cam fees include the expenses to keep the actual building up make sure that the you know the lobby is clean the entrance is clean the parking lot you know they just basically maintain the the overall property itself and collectively the the tenants we have to you know put in money and the cam fees they go up each year moving in luckily i found a space that was already it used to be a salon years before so it already had the plumbing and the electrical set up so i didn't need to have it built out um, I didn't even change the flooring. I just basically got the flooring buffed and waxed really well, stripped, buffed, and waxed. And I just used that, you know, the same flooring. Um, but a lot of people, they go all out. And, oh, yeah, and also, you know, did, did the painting. When I moved into a brick and mortar, I had to actually buy uh, everything, you know, because it was basically empty. I had to buy chairs, salon chairs, shampoo bowls. I used the shampoo bowls that was there at first, and then a couple of years later, as I was making money, I ended up changing that part out, getting new shampoo bowls. Uh, I got a color bar, um, washer and dryer. That's all I was trying to say. I had to purchase a washer and dryer. So you basically have to purchase everything, the, the uh, waiting area, 
reception area, if you want to have a reception area, it's more expenses when it comes to a brick and mortar. And that's what you have to prepare for. That's why I don't suggest someone just going straight from out of beauty school and then just going right into brick and mortar. It's baby steps. I would suggest you build your clientele at a salon, build it up to a point where you can afford the necessary expenses and make a profit. Um, and like I said, always, always have money to the side, always have like a savings, business savings and personal savings, because I feel like you should have money to the side to take a vacation or to have time off. You know what I mean? To just regroup, recess, rejuvenate. Cause I take trips like every two months. I'm not going to lie just because I need to be able to just ooh, and enjoy my life. You know, that's the whole purpose of making money. You want to enjoy your life, yet still know how to manage your money. You know? Um, set up an LLC. Uh, what I have, I, I started off with an LLC, but now I have what is called an S-Corp. And this is something you should probably talk to your accountant about or even just look this up, the difference between an LLC and an S-Corp. Um, it's way better when it comes to taxes. It saves me way more money than an LLC. Um, so that's something that you can look into for yourself. Once you make over now, back before I did the escort, once I once you know, once you're making over thirty thousand dollars a year, I think it's forty thousand now. That's something else you can look up to be for sure. Don't quote me on it. But once you make over a certain amount of money, either thirty to forty thousand dollars a year, then you can switch over to S Corp. Um, so that's the thing: setting up your entity, which is LLC, S Corp, that sort of thing. Uh, the salon software that I presently have is Forest, P H O R E S T, and I love Forest because they give you analytics more than one person can schedule uh, with your stylist you can have a bunch of stylists on there um, it's just it's just a real cool software to have man to help you with managing your salon I'll tell you the truth um, and also I was able to I had a receptionist for a long time I always would have a receptionist but I got to a point where I didn't even need a receptionist anymore and I was able to take that money and put it uh, towards uh, ads and, and put it, you know, put it towards more things in the business. The reason why I don't need a receptionist now is for the simple fact that all of my stylists are able to book their own clients from that salon software. So it still gives them, even though they're employees and they're on the payroll, it still gives them that independence where they are responsible for calling the clients, making sure they come or uh, they're responsible for scheduling, checking out the clients. A lot of the work is going to be a lot of long hours. It's going to be a lot of work going into it. But once you get it going, you'll see it gets better and better.